So, Adair, when, when should a lab in general start doing primary PCI uh, using TR access? What level of experience? Uh, what does the staff need to know? Uh, what level of experience and confidence do the operators uh, need to have and skill set do they need to have before they start uh, thinking about primary PCI? Right. And so I think this is something that comes up quite often when we talk about, um, I think people know that the data for radial access in the STEMI patient population is probably the best or the most robust. And so this is where everyone wants to go to right away. Um, and I think that it is, um, while that's, that's kind of the, sort of I think of it's sort of the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but you have to kind of work uh, to kind of get there to really achieve those benefits. And I think the way I look at it is I sort break it down into three levels. Um, I think there's an operator competency issue that I think you have to be able to obtain access in a really sort of quick manner, less than three to five minutes in over 95% of the cases. So you have to be someone who can get access really quickly. And if you aren't able to get access quickly, you need to have a bailout strategy, whether it's left radial um, or groin. Um, you need to have that sort of backup ready to go and have your staff aware of that. Um, and ha be comfortable with catheter and guide engagement. And you know, I think doing these cases with um, sort of non-urgent or non-emergent cases, I think it's really helpful to understand how the different, you know, left back of type of catheters sit, how the different RCA guide catheters sit, and I think really over 50 PCIs is a really reasonable target for an operator to become pretty comfortable with um, guide engagement and, you know, understanding how the guides work. And then I think, I think like I mentioned earlier, having a bailout plan, uh, our time cutoff is really important. So you're not struggling trying to get radial access for 20 minutes before you decide you're going to bail out to some other area. I think that's really important. I think next, I think, is really the staff and the lab competency. Um, I think they really have to understand and appreciate and sort of have an understanding of what has the operator, what you guys are expecting, so that they know how to prep the room and prep the table and the patient uh, to best accommodate this. I think everyone is stressed. Uh, I think, like, many centers are probably like our center and where we have a really kind of a skeleton crew. We have three people um, plus the, the physician. So it's not like we have a whole bunch of people to do all kinds of complicated uh, setups. And so I think it's important to have a standardized patient prep. Uh, one of the things that was really a, a big advance in our practice was to have a combination drape where it's a radial femoral drape. And so depending whatever access strategy you want, whether it's right radial, left radial, right left groin, there's holes in the drape for all that. And so that everything can be prepped and ready depending on whatever you want to do can be ready with uh, one drape and no one's having to pull secondary and third drapes together. Um, we always prep the femoral access site for bailout um, as well as for if in case you need hemodynamic support um, during the case. You don't know. Sometimes patients can be, they can start off pretty stable and then kind of get kind of sick um, during the a primary PCI procedure. So having ability to you know, put in a hemodynamic support device quickly is going to be important. And I think the staff also has to be familiar with catheters and they know what guide catheters you typically use for your right-sided interventions and your left-sided interventions as well as for your diagnostic catheters so they can have them in the room uh, while you're getting the diagnostic uh, images taken. And then I think the sensor competency is also important. You know, our ED does a good job of trying to help, help us um, get these patients ready by uh, prepping the wrist um, in the emergency department, getting the jewelry off, getting an ID, putting the ID band somewhere else, cleaning the wrist, cleaning, you know, shaving and prepping the groin area as well. Um, we sort of went back and forth with teaching them barco testing as well. So all this is really trying to help get your, um, you know, operator, your staff and lab competency and then the center competency.